Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about yet another one of those unsung heroes of game development, those libraries that other libraries depend upon to make excellent games and game engines. And today we are talking about Pixie JS, and we're talking about Pixie JS because Pixie JS version 5 was just released. And this is the first major update in just about two years. Now, if you've heard of Pixie JS before, it might be because it was the underlying HTML uh, 2D renderer for the Phaser library and for a number of other 2D game engines, uh, HTML5 game engines. This is the technology used to run them. Now what you see behind you is actually a Pixie.js version 4 demo running, but it gives you a pretty good idea of the kind of functionality Pixie provides. This is a 2D drawing library that works across all browsers, including a Canvas backup, but it uses WebGL on the front end for performance uh, to make life as nice as possible. There's also some refinement in Pixie GS v5, giving you a new API, allowing you to go kind of lower level, but without having to deal with all of the crap. And that's kind of a very nice new feature. Now, the demo you're seeing right now is showing you some sprites being drawn and the ability to apply filters to them. Filters you can think of just like um, shaders, basically. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a shockwave shader here. And now you're going to see a ripple going on in the scene. And this is the kind of stuff that Pixie.js provides for you in a performant manner. Now, let's add some glow to our sprites. You'll see we are now glowing around the edge. And let's do one more. We'll add an ASCII filter on top as well. And now we are rendering in raw ASCII at the same speed across many different browsers using WebGL acceleration when available. And that, in a nutshell, is the kind of functionality that Pixie provides for you. And it provides it very well. So now let's head on over. We are on their GitHub webpage. So as you can see, this is a full-blown open source project. If you are wondering, the license is my favorite license, MIT. MIT, if you don't know your open source license, basically, well, actually, there's a good little summary going on on that page I just left. But basically, MIT license allows you to do whatever you want. Just don't sue them. And so it's about as straightforward as open source license gets. And it's one of my favorite, just as an end user anyways, because it gives you so much power and flexibility in how you use it. So this is their uh, page. It shows you how to go ahead and get set up. Basically, you can use NPM or you can just do a CDN install, just link it and just start going. On top of that, there is now a new playground, which we will check out in just a second. Um, so here you can see this is Pixie.js's homepage. We're going to get into what's new in the V5 release in just a second. But you see, you can go here to uh, pixiejs.com uh, and you can also download it that way if you so wish. You can also download it in a way that you can only have the pieces that you want. So here we are, the release notes over on Medium. I don't know why more and more developers are using Medium. I don't get the appeal of Medium. Normally, there's a bar down here that I have to get rid of every time. It's, it's an annoying site. I don't get it. If you can understand to me or explain to me why Medium is becoming a thing, please let me know. I, I would love to hear them. But anyways, uh, it's got nothing to do with this particular release other than that's where it's hosted. So as you can see, it's been about two years since the last release of Pixie.js. So five is here. And there's a lot of under the hood refactoring that went on here. Um, there's a new build and project structure it is now made up of multiple consumable components that can be installed in your project with npm slash yarn. Uh, foundational components are designed to work with webpack slash rollup and other JS packaging system. They support ES modules for tree shaking. It's now much easier to exclude modules you don't need. So if you don't need the graphics object or the interaction object, if you're using it as a raw renderer, for example, you can really strip down your code size as a result. Um, it's two high level bundles, Pixie, which is WebGL only, and then Pixie JS, which has a backup uh, script canvas rendering layer in there. And this version is 20% smaller than the previous version. They've also kind of promoted WebGL. WebGL is ubiquitous now. It used to be kind of like a 50-50 split between if you needed a canvas renderer or WebGL. WebGL is available just about everywhere these days. So what they've done is they've renamed internally things like it used to be called the WebGL renderer. It is now just renderer. Uh, but there still is the fallback legacy version, as they just mentioned, available in case you need to support older browsers. Um, new architecture, same API. They've got WebGL 2 support coming in if it, where it makes things faster. A huge change to the core code base, but the API has remained pretty much the same. So if you're coming from V4 or earlier, this should be an easy migration for you. If not, they have a handy migration guide right here about what they broke. And one major thing here, and if you're a Godot developer listening to this, we really want this is sprite batching. Now, sprite batching is all about making things run faster. And you've actually got a demonstration of how much faster these sprites perform because they are batched. This is the key to good performance. When you have thousands upon thousands of sprites, you need to have a good sprite batching system. And Pixie.js has ones now. Um, 
They also have graphics objects in Pixie have been getting a lot of love. Uh, you can now do texture fills. You can now clone and share the geometry with different graphics objects. You can now punch holes in things. Uh, you can now transform to graphics when drawing. This means you can scale rotate a shape as it is being drawn into the graphic object. A filter, which we just saw in action in that earlier demo, have been upgraded. Uh, they're faster than a V4, um, less GPU interaction. Uh, so basically, they should just perform better. Textures got improved. New texture types include cube texture, texture array, and buffer textures. And you can see here how they are used in action. As you can see, it gives you an example of what this um, library is like to work with. And it's a very clean, straightforward, easy to use API for the most part. And then probably the biggest new announcement is this brand spanking new mid-level API. And what do you think of this guy as? It's the um, V5 is actually built on top of this API. So this is providing low level access over top of the WebGL abstraction. So if you want to work at kind of closer to the hardware, just like the extended Pixie functionality in Pixie 5 is, you can actually just work and ignore their, their implementation of top level things like sprites and, and tweens or whatever, and just roll your own, but not have to deal with the, the finickiness of WebGL. It will take care of all of those interactions interactions for you. So it does give you another slightly lower level abstraction to work at if you choose. Um, here's a simple API overview. So now you've got it's broken down into geometry, shader, and state. And you see examples in action here. They even built a proof of concept 3D engine on top of the API to prove that it is flexible. You can see a demo of it in action right there. And finally, we have a new playground for Pixie.js, which I think I already have open. Yes, I do. Uh, here it is in action. Oh, but my example is messed up, so let me get rid of this. Leave you. All right, let's open up a fresh copy. Um, here, I'll just click it. So this is a basically editing an environment and test playground for working with Pixie applications. You can see a very simple example here. Uh, they created a sprite, put it in, set its own anchor point to its center, centered it to the screen, um, added it as a child, and then they have this callback that is called every tick. And all it does is rotates it by 0.1 degree every frame. And then you've got this rotating guy here. So what I could do, for example, is we could come in here and change this to a five, for example. And you're gonna see we have a much faster rotating bunny going on. Now, another nice thing about the playground is I could come over here and first off, tab works, which is always nice, but I can go ahead and do bunny and then you're seeing I'm getting full IntelliSense support. I'm getting full syntax colorization. Uh, we even have right click support right here. Uh, so you can basically play around with it. You have a full blown web based IDE to evaluate things. You can even have come up here to the uh, settings and you've got uh, the ability to switch to a specific version for Pixie.js or go to a custom URL to provide your own. Uh, you can name it, share it, and so on. We can add external scripts that we're also dependent on. So say I was using a physics library or something for JavaScript, I can bring it in this way and it will work directly in the playground. So if you wanted a quick and easy way to evaluate Pixie or to do um, create your own sh settings to share with other people, they have this nice little playground for you to work with. And it gives you the ability to kind of jump in without having to do any setup or initialization on your end. So if you want to just sort of check out or evaluate what Pixie is capable of, well, this is about the easiest way that you can go about it. Now, if you're interested, Pixie Playground is available at pixieplayground.com. But of course, I will toss that link in the link I link down below. And that's about it. So that is Pixie uh, JS version 5. It is an extremely cool and capable WebGL based 2D graphics library, which apparently they built an entire 3D game engine over. So I guess I should stop calling it that. Uh, but it just gets rid of the drudgery of dealing with different browsers and it provides you a very capable performant and robust graphics library to work with. So I do highly recommend if you're in the market for a uh, web-based renderer technology of some form, uh, Pixie.js is basically the SDL or SFML or similar of the HTML5 world. And even if you're creating your own um, HTML5 or JavaScript based game engine, don't roll the, everything yourself. Depend on the really good libraries that are out there, and Pixie.js is one of the best. All right, have you used it before? Do you have an opinion on it? Are there problems? Are there alternatives that you would suggest? Let me know any and all of these things in the comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.